Hey folks, welcome to today's lesson. A very basic introduction about what is number one, a square, or what we mean by a square, and what we mean by a cube. Now, when we think about a square, right, you're thinking about this sort of shape. What do you know about a square? Well, hopefully you know that the sides of a square are all the same. Okay, let's take, for example, that's five centimeters and five centimeters. You might then say that the, the, the perimeter of a square is maybe 20 centimeters. You might say that the area is 25 because we times them together, five by five. Now that last little fact about the area is actually what a square or a squared number comes from. Okay, now a squared number is something like this. For example, if I look at this square here, five with a little two next to it means five times five. And that's what we've got there in terms of a square, which means 25. If I look at four squared, that means four times four, which will be 16. One squared is just one times one, which is one. 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay, so squared numbers are simply numbers that have been multiplied by itself, just like if you're finding the area within an actual square. Now, what are the very common misconceptions? They think when I have something like a square, it means we times it by 2. That does work for 2 squared, because 2 times 2 is 4, but it wouldn't work for any of the other cases. I often see people say, for example, 3 squared, they might say is 3 times 2, which is 6. Please don't ever do that because that is incorrect. 3 squared, like all the other examples, means 3 times 3, which is 9. Okay, so a squared number is any number, I might say x times x, where it's been um, times to by itself, which means x squared. So what do you think a cube means? Well, a cube often, I'm going to extend this little uh, square to a cube. Okay, you can see if I had to find the volume of a cube, how would you do that? You might say we would do 5 times 5 times 5. So a cube, we're multiplying it by itself three times. So a, squ a square you're doing it twice, whereas a cube, you're doing it three times. So x times x times x, we would say that would be x cubed. So I wonder if you can answer the next question. Can you find the answer to two cubed? Well, hopefully you've said two times two times two. Well, two times two is four, four times two is eight, therefore, 2 cubed is equal to 8. What about a harder one? 5 cubed. You might need a calculator for this one. 5 times 5 times 5, which would be, well, 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. So if you have a question where it's been squared, okay, like 10 squared, means we are multiplying it by itself just twice. So that would be 100. But if we have cubed, it means we're doing the same thing, multiplying it by itself, but this time we would do it by three times, which in this case would be a 1,000. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a brief introduction about what a cube is and about what a squared number is. You often are asked about the first five squared numbers. And if you're asked about the first five squared numbers, what might you say? Well, one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared is 16, five squared is 25, six squared is 36, seven squared is 49, okay, and you can see it keeps on going. So these numbers that I'm circling now, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, are what we all refer to as squared numbers. You can also do the same thing for cubes if you wish, but often it's a little bit more challenging. 1 cubed is 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. 2 cubed, which we looked at before, was 2 times 2 times 2, 
which is 8. 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. 4 cubed is 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. 5 cubed is 5 times 5 times 5, is 125, etc., etc. So you can see there, they're a little bit more challenging. You might need a calculator for some of the bigger ones, but in all of these, we're multiplying it by itself three times for cubes and two times for squares. So that brings us to the second part of this tutorial, is, and that is, what is a square root or what is a cube root? So we're going to look at that as well. Now, often we've just learnt about that. Let's say, for example, that... Um, actually, I won't use 2, sorry. I'm going to use uh, 4. We say that 4 squared is 16 because I'm going to put that in brackets, 4 squared is 4 times 4. Therefore, if I look for the square root, which is that symbol there, now sometimes it, there is a little 2 there, okay, because it means a square root, but often with the square root, we don't have to put it there. But if I look for the square root of 16, what we would say is the answer would be 4. And you might recognize that's what we started off with before we squared the actual number. So when they ask what is a square root, well basically this is the opposite, the opposite of a square. Just like I guess if you have a plus, the opposite is minus. Minus the opposite, oops, is plus. You have a times, the opposite would be divide. So if you have a square, the opposite is a square root. What do you reckon if you have a cubed? Well the opposite is a cube root. As I said to you before, that often when you have a square root, you don't actually need to put the 2 there. It just means a square root. But if you want to have a cubed root, or later on, we won't do this just now, but you might even have the fourth root or the fifth root. Okay, But any time you want to have a square root, you can just have it as it is. So basically when I'm trying to find the square root of a number, for example, if I looked at the square root of 25, the question I would probably say to myself if I had to do this without a calculator would be, well, what times itself equals 25? Well, hopefully you'll recognize that 5 times 5 is 25. Therefore, the square root of 25 is just 5. If I looked at the square root of 100, well, what times itself equals 100? Well, 10 times 10 equals 100. Therefore, the square root of 100 is just 10. Finally, we'll do the square root of, let's say, um, 125. Well, that's going to be, actually not 125, what I'm doing, that, that would be a cube root. Um, the square root of, let's say, 64. Okay, well, that would be 8 times 8 is 64. Therefore, the answer is going to be 8. Or you can figure out, if you know just what your squares are, for example, if you knew that 8 squared was 64, then the square root 64 is just 8. So it's that number that you need to multiply by itself twice to get the answer. So if that's what square root is, well then, can you figure out what cube root is? So if I gave you the, the question, find the cube root of 8, would you know what the answer is? Now this is certainly a bit more challenging without a calculator. So what I would look for in this case, well, do I know something cubed equals 8? Well, you might not know that because we just did that recently. And we would say that, yes, it would be 2 cubed because that's 2 times 2 times 2. Therefore, the cubed root of 8 is going to be 2. Okay, that number we have to put there. For example, again, we could do the cubed root of 1. Well, what cubed equals 1? 1 cubed equals 1, because 1 times 1 times 1 equals 1. I'm going to do one last one. Um, we'll do the cubed root of 64. So I think through my numbers and think, oh, we've already done one, we've done two. I wonder what three is. Well, three is three times three times three, which is 27. So it can't be 27. So four times four, 16 times four is 64. Ah, look at that. My answer must be four. So if you're doing these without a calculator, the most easy 
probably thing to do is to start off by saying, what is one cubed? What is two cubed, three cubed, four cubed? And often without a calculator, it will be a fairly straightforward number. If it's a really big number, then you can use the calculator on your on your key on your calculator. Or there is a lesson that I have on this series that shows you how to find the cube root and square root of bigger numbers by using factor trees. Okay, so if you're interested in doing that, please go and watch those lessons. Um, just the last thing I'm going to show you, and that's just showing you on the calculator exactly where those buttons are going to be. Um, unfortunately, my emulator, guys, is not working, so I'll have to bear with me just with an image here. Um, okay. So, your calculator will look sim something similar to this, okay? Um, what you might see is that, I'm just going to circle it in green, you can see there. Okay, that button there says X squared. So, that's the square button. So, if you've got your calculator now and you want to do something like 5 squared, so if you press the 5 and then press your X squared button, okay, it will generate the question or the answer 25. Um, if you want to um, do the cubed, again, you want to do 5 cubed. If you press 5 and then you'll see diagonally to the left of it, I'll do that one in red, you'll see we've got the X cubed button. Okay, that will be 125. So they're the two buttons in your calculator that can allow you to do it. Now, although we haven't covered it, I will just show you next to the X squared, you'll see something that's very similar, where it's got X, it's a little box there. So if you want to have something that's, that's bigger than squared and, and cubed, so it's maybe something like 5 to the power of 4, then you could just simply press the 5, press your X little box button, and you could type in a little four in, into it as well. Um, okay, so there are your three buttons in terms of your um, terms of your squares, etc., in cubes. Um, if we have a quick look at, if you want to have a quick look at the uh, square root and cube root buttons, um, what you'll notice next to the squared button, so I'll do it in purple, you might see a root sign. Now you'll notice that there's no number in front of it, so that just means the square root. So if you press that button in purple and then type in 25 and press equals, you'll get the answer of 5. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, so then you come to what about a cubed root? Well, above it, you can just see in yellow, it says the cubed root. Okay, so if I want to do the cube root of 125, which we already know to be 5, then you can do shift because it's yellow and then do your square root button and it'll come up with a cube root of 125. Press your equal button and it comes out to be 5 as well. Okay, so a little bit there about uh, your cubes, your squares, your cube roots and square roots. I hope that was a little bit useful to you. Um, if any problems at all, let me know and I'll try to sort it out. Have a great day.